I am a great lover of Wired magazine, and of its founder, Kevin Kelly. He brought, he brought up in uh, Wired of uh, March of this year um, the notion, that's not his notion, the notion of the mirror world. I want to go into the notion of the mirror world that he brings in through Henri Corbin. And um, I thank you uh, uh, that you brought Corbin up. I knew Corbin in the 70s. And um, I had a dream that I've, uh, that I've spoken about several times um, that I brought to Corbin, and I want to start there. This dream um, was a dream of a white city. So you have to now imagine. Um, we are at Eranos. Um, uh, the, um, there was a room there that is called the Chambre Copte. Uh, the Chambre Copte was a, uh, was a place with Coptic furniture. It was right next to um, James Hillman's study. And that's where, where Henri Corbin would be. And um, he, for some reason that I still don't know, he liked me. And um, he manifested that he liked you by taking his hearing aid out and putting it on the table, right? So he put the hearing aid between us, and I said, um, uh, Professor, I've had this dream, and I need to talk with you about it. And he got really interested. I said, I'm walking along a river, and um, I see across from the river a city, and it's all white with cupolas, and it's white and it's very attractive and I dive in and I swim to the other side and it's a white city and it is it Moorish or it is Arabic I don't know I don't know what era I am in I see people walk around in Arabic garb and um, the city itself feels hyper real it feels not just real but hyper real it feels so real that I can viscerally sense it. Um, now, this, I'm walking around and then I wake up and Corbin says to me, you were there because this city exists. It's called the White City. And um, the White City in, um, in Islam would be called uh, Alam al-Mithal. And the Alam al-Mithal, he translated as the Mundus Imaginalis because, of course, Corbin was a scholar and um, he liked Latin. And so let's move away for a moment from the notion of Mundus Imaginalis. It was a world of, said to be a world of similitudes and therefore it was a look-alike world. It was a look-alike world and... Um, Eric, you, you've uh, said um, how it was um, an in-between, an intermediate, an intermediary and an intermediate world. Go back to his lecture. It's a perfect description of it, so I don't have to do that. Um, and uh, in this world uh, of similitudes, everything that is there is a similitude. It is not literal. It is, um, and that's very important to when you work, work on a dream. Uh, because I spend my life um, living in this world of similitudes. The first thing that you notice when you're in that world of similitude is that in this world of lookalikes, in this simulation, when you're in this simulation, this dream simulation, you realize, the first thing you realize is that everything is real. Everything appears entirely real. Corbin describes the Alam al mithal in the following way. Um, in short, this is a world of subtle bodies of which it is indispensable to have some notion in order to understand that there is a link between pure spirit and material body. Their mode of being is therefore described as being in suspense, like that of the image or form, this mode of being constitutes its own matter and is independent of the substratum to which it is imminent as if by accident. So it is not, um, it is not 
made of where it appears, it has a place of appearance. And so this becomes really important when we look at technology. We're talking about a place of, of appearance and um, the comparison regularly used by our authors, which were the Sufi sheikhs that he studied, is the mode in which images in, suspend, in suspense appear and subsist in a mirror. The material substance of the mirror, whether metal or mineral, is not the substance of the image. The image could be only accidentally of the same substance. The substance is simply the place of its appearance. You're in, in this virtual world. You're stepping out and you're walking a plank and you are like 30 stories above the ground. But here I'm walking on this plank. I can feel my body become scared. I begin to shake. And I move forward like this very slowly, very slowly. I know that I am in a room here at Pacifica. I walk really slowly, but I'm on a plank. And below me is the world. And if I fall, I will be dead. Now, my mind knows that this is not true. But my whole body begins to shake. It is a fully embodied experience. This world of virtual and mixed reality is an entirely embodied experience. So what is happening is that we're moving out of a world, the cyber world that is disembodied, into a world that has become fully embodied. And I'm interested in the embodied imagination. 